All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kids of all ages, welcome back to my shop. My name is Kevin, and we're back on this. Uh, there's so much I have to show you, and I'm really wanting to speed this series up, but there's just a lot to show. And not for you older guys that's been doing this for years and years and years, but the new guys coming up. We're going to cut the the flex shaft length. Uh, first off you want to do is you want to make sure that you got room for your prop because the measure is going to be taken from here to there we got a bushing in here this is what I was talking about that's your bushing and that centers everything up your prop shaft and all that so so you want to leave yourself enough land yet, so you got threads to right there. This is Octura prop, so I'm going to come a little bit in right there. We're going to lock it down. I am not going to tighten, and I'm going to show you here in a second. You're going to have to also grind a flat on the shaft too for that to lock into. I'm not tightening up the Zuber nut because they are a bear, and once they're down, they're down. So now. I've got this pushed all the way in there. And you got to be careful of that prop. It's all the way in the collet. So we're going to make a measurement. And I can take the prop off now, actually. Without getting my hands completely cut. And this is the way I do it. If, is this the way it's supposed to be done? I don't know, but this is the way I always do it. So we're measuring from this bushing pushed in to this back edge of this. So we're looking at two and a sixteenth inch. So that's what I got to cut off to get it to right here, but we don't want it there. We want some distance between this and this. Why? I'm fixing to show you. So we got two and a sixteenth. Now we're going to pull it out. And that collet is really tight, but that's not a bad thing. Okay. Whenever that motor is going to turn this thing, and you can see the lay on this. If you could take your hands and go forward like this on the flex shaft, that means that's a left hand lay. That means it's going to rotate counterclockwise or to the left. So we had two and a sixteenth. What we're gonna do is we're not gonna cut, we're gonna cut an inch and a half off of it. And then we're going to look at it. We're going to we're going to creep up on our measurement. We're not going to just say, okay, I want a quarter inch gap, so we're going to cut it uh, one and so and so and so and so. So no, we're going to cut an inch and a half off of it right now. I can see that. We're not to our final cut. All right, we're going to put it back in. Then we're going to take another measurement. All right, it's all the way in. So now, we're like exactly one inch. We want three sixteenths, three six sixteenths gap. Because whenever this motor torques, it's going to twist this thing up. And that piece is right here. When that motor spins up on it in this, in this direction, this is going to tighten up. Just like you would a spring or anything else. With tighten up and it's going to pull in a little bit at that first shot. What you don't want is this thing butted up. Because what happens is when you get down on it and it pulls this thing in tight, you can either pull it out of your collet or you can slide your drive dog back. You don't want that. So this cut here will be a little bit more exact. We know we got a one inch gap in there. We're wanting three sixteenths. 
So what we're going to do, and I'm going to get something that marks a little better than this. So what we're going to do is, we're going to cut it down three quarters. And then we're going to grind us to that 3 16 stick out that we want. So I probably got our, that, that extra 16th right there. There you go. And I can guarantee you that's pretty much what we want. And that's right at 3 16 exactly. So that's what you want sticking out of there now. It's nice and stiff and what have you. We can tighten this. Get that tight. We're done with that right now. So now we're good to go. It's going to be spinning in that direction. And that's how you... So right now what we're going to do... And like I said, I need to go step by step here. We're going to go back and forth on this set screw a little bit. What we're doing is we're marking this shaft. And it's going to be very hard for y'all to see, but where that set screw locked it in right there, it left a mark right there. Some people. Some people get out the grinder and start grinding on this. You got to remember there's a balance point here and you kind of replacing what you take out with the with that actual uh, and I don't know if y'all can see it but it's right right there. You're going to have to fill this with the actual nut, or not nut, I'm sorry, set screw. I don't believe in taking a huge amount of off. You just want to make sure it doesn't slip. Yeah, so it's... Okay, it's right there. I had to get our 3 16 gap right there. I'm going to tighten it down, back off, tighten it down, back off. Alright, that's there. So, when it's pulling that prop, it has and at the final end and the final assembly it will be uh loctited in loctite will be put on it not loctited but it, uh, loctite will be put on it and it'll be red loctite okay now and that feels good too i feel very little resistance This is not the prop we're going to be running. This is a prop that goes on my kayak. But, and that chattering noise. Is actually the uh, magnets in that motor. So, we're going to try to light it up. I got to get this damn Zuber nut on there though. And I know this is going to be a job. Actually, I'm not going to run it with a prop on it because that's dangerous. Don't run it with the prop on it. It's dangerous. So we're going to set this over here. We don't know the rotation of it yet. I don't even know if this motor's even going to run with this ESC. I don't even know if the ESC is any good. None of it's proven. Uh,
we're gonna find out. So. Now, I'm kind of glad that happened. When you go in the wrong direction, all you have to do is swap two of these wires. And you'll be going in the right direction. If you notice, that's the reason this shot up in there like it did. And we're not oiled or anything like that because I don't want to get oil all over everything. And I've got to reverse Channel two. <sighs> All right, let's try it now. Let's try this again. Alright. Our end point adjustment. Throttle trim. Another thing I don't like about, ah, damn, that hurt my ears. The uh, another thing I don't like about uh, Fly Sky is that what you just heard. Let me break this loose, and we're going to run it with some oil in it, or some grease, actually.
I wasn't in a big hurry to get this boat nasty looking, but I guess that's what I guess what we gotta do. You gotta remember this is on 8S now. point until it just shuts off. Boy, is that a change in sound, huh? Alright, now what we're going to do, I don't think we're getting full throttle. So, on channel 2, Put it at a. We're gonna put it at. I don't know how it jumped onto that. Still running. Alright, let me back off of it. Hang on. Alright, let's just go to 100%. So I'm kind of wondering, kind of wondering, some heat on there, but you're going to have some running it out of the water like that. Now it's not set up for reverse, it's only set up for forward. So I kind of, I want to sneak this thing up is well, there's 120 right there. That's going to run. All right. Okay, different controllers, different results sometimes. So we're going in the right direction. Obviously the last time this thing was run, it was run on a... Uh, S so that is extremely dangerous and don't ever do it because this thing is armed And 
do not do what I'm doing here because that is nothing more than three bladed razor blade ready to cut your hand off <laughs> maybe not off but you'll probably wish you didn't own it so that's the right rotation definitely 8s is its number so we got a lot more to go but we lit it up and we know we proved that the ESC and everything the gentleman doesn't have to go buy another ESC these packs please don't write me on them so that's cool I can do these wires And I got to get the steering done. I've got to jewel the, the whole steering and everything. This is something else we're going to go over. I don't know if you gentlemen have ever used one of these. If you do a lot of this, I'm sure you do own one. They're very handy to have. Especially setting a servo like I gotta set this one now you can do it with your controller and the knob came off okay you can do it with your controller but let's say you want to find center you hit that button that holds you at center right there and it holds it hard it's not going anywhere the next one will show you your your throw and whether you need to change it this one will just work like that so we're going to hit the button again we're going to find center that's pretty much where we want it. The uh, I'm going to have to bend this rod up and up and over because he originally using the clevis type. I don't like those. I like the ball end ones, and to me, it's just a better hookup and everything else. So we'll be getting that in. We'll be getting the ESC in, and we know it works. It's it ready to rock we'll be getting this in and we'll be do the, doing the water piping and I'm going to get some uh, proper batteries and get everything nice and tucked away and nice and pretty and get in I don't believe in antennas I believe in your FHSS everything can stay right here in the boat I might put a little pedestal up here so you don't lose control or anything like that but that's it in a nutshell we we've, we've got it and it's not armed and I did put this prop on there with it armed and I don't want to hear any comments because it was extremely stupid extremely stupid because the internet's full of pictures of people getting their hands in these damn props but you also see the benefit of grease and the noise it makes without it and the noise it makes with it and in the proper rotation too helps so you know how to cut the shaft grease I didn't really want to grease it but whatever I want to I want to light it up I want I want to light it up just as much as y'all want to see it light up so at 5.5 horsepower I want to say that's at right around 40,000 RPMs so you're talking about a, a pretty fast boat here so we're gonna see because I got a four-time national champion is gonna set it up for me and I'm gonna do a video on that and that's gonna be something to see because I'm figuring I told him I want a hundred out of it or close <laughs> we'll see but uh, I, the boat is definitely capable of it uh, to lock these in for front lift or down lift or whatever 
So I've got the man, four-time national champion in a row, in a row, gonna test this boat out for me because I don't have my IMPBA license or my NAMBA license anymore. I've got out of it, I don't race them anymore. And that's another thing. If you do have a boat like this, or any RC boat, pretty much, you cannot run it around people swimming, people fishing in boats and stuff like that. It is literally, you're opening yourself to a huge lawsuit. If you run this over somebody with something like this on it, you're going to hurt them and you're going to hurt them bad. I suggest if you're into RC boating, become a NAMBA or IMPBA member and uh, run at a sanctioned track. That's the safest way of doing it. They got net and not only that, you're insured. So that's it boys and girls. Hit like and subscribe. Uh, we're not long for putting this baby in the water. And uh, I thought, I think it's gonna run. So hit like and subscribe, hit that bell. So you get notifications whenever we do do it. And uh, yeah, this, this thing got some ump to it. So of course I knew it did, but the, uh, it's gonna run. It's gonna run good too. All right guys.